Hi there guys, welcome back to the Studio B Floor Project. So today, we're gonna give you a primer on priming. I get to get into the tape box. Because hidden in here I have... We'll need one of those. And we'll need one of these. Now, you can spend a lot of money on paint brushes. There are people that do, there are times that call for it, this ain't one of those times. This is the cheapest, nastiest, scraggly chip brush you can get. It's just a standard two inch chip brush. There's nothing special about it at all. This is kind of cool. You get one of these, it's a uh, handy paint pail. I love this thing. It's got a magnet on the inside and it's got replaceable liners. You're gonna go through a lot of these on a project like this. The magnet is so that you can put that there. It does everything you ask of it and nothing you don't. It's not rocket science, it's paint pale. So, let's talk about priming. Let's talk about how to use one of these because a lot of people don't. If you think to paint, that you paint like that, like mushing it and smear, no. That's how you make a bagel. We're painting. Painting works on capillary action. All of these little bristles in here, they don't actually hold paint themselves. It's the spaces in between them that holds the paint. It's capillary action. So, let's take a look at how to actually paint. Let's start with some actual paint. Now, because our background color on the floor is white, this is the exact same white paint we used for the floor. We're gonna start by filling our thing a little bit. You want like an inch of paint in there. That's it. There are people that would fill this like up to here. I don't understand these people. When you're charging your brush, you dip the brush in about that far. About half, three quarter inch. That's it. That's all you need. Okay. There is no reason on earth for any rational human to ever put paint all the way up to here. I've seen this done. You don't even need to put paint all the way up to here. If you put paint up to here, you're never gonna get to use that paint. That's what you're gonna get. So you put up to there. Now the next thing people do is they smear it along the side. They do, they do the thing like with a butter knife. This ain't, this ain't a smear. You dip it and you flick it. And then you're ready to go, okay? That's it, dip and flick. That's all you wanna do. Don't smear it along the top. It's dumb and it, it hurts my soul when you do that, so yeah. So we're gonna take this over here and we're going to prime. Now let's talk about what we're actually doing because at first glance, this step doesn't make any sense at all. But when you think it through, this one step is what's going to have the single biggest impact on how much touch up you do later on. So really pay attention on this video. It's not long, it's not hard, just follow along. So our tape is on an irregular surface. This is, this is crazy bumpy. Now we've smushed our tape down as much as we can. And if I painted this right now with just the, the actual color, what's gonna happen is that paint is gonna weep under in a, a million little places along this line. That tape's, the paint is gonna get sucked in by the same capillary action that holds the paint in our brush. And it's gonna go under there and it's gonna form little tiny pools all along the thing and it's gonna dry there. And when you peel the tape off, you're gonna have a really jagged, icky line. Here's how you don't do that. We know it's gonna suck paint under there anyway. We know that paint's gonna to dry to the floor and be there forever. So if it's gonna do that anyway, why not do it in the same color? This is gonna bleed no matter what, but if you can make the blood invisible, it's almost like it never happened. So we dip, we flick, and on the stripe area, we paint. And we just paint a little bit. Now you'll notice every time I'm pushing that paint into the tape line. And it doesn't matter how far onto the tape line you go. I go about quarter to three eighths of an inch. That's all you need. Just like that. And now 
when that bleeds. And it's going to bleed. You'll see it bleed. And in our last video in the series, I'm going to peel this off. And on the bottom of that piece of tape, you're going to see a million little white splotches and lines. That's bleeding right now. Absolutely. But because it's white, you'll never see it. And that's the beauty of it. This is our magic eraser. So we dip, we flick, and we just pour the paint right in. Now I got a big hole in the floor here, so I'm just gonna gob some paint right in there. And this is not a precision thing. You can be pretty messy with this. You can get this paint anywhere because the floor is white. So you don't have to, you don't have to be fussy. Oh look, I got a bristle. Cheap brush. Don't leave the bristles on the floor. You'll find them later in the finished paint. And if you've got big divots and gaps, it's a good time to get some extra paint in those. Like right here, just gob it on. Don't worry about brush strokes. You're not gonna see them. And we just work our way down that line. This is tedious, it's boring, but it's very, very necessary. See how the inside of my bucket looks? There's a little bit of paint here, there's a little bit of paint here, and that's it, okay? Down here and up there, that's it. There's no paint around the rim. There never should be. This is what your bucket should look like as you go. So you do that, and then you go into the next stripe. And as you go, you're gonna, you're gonna keep with that nervous habit. You're gonna keep just smushing and creasing, and because this is the last time you're gonna get to double check all these things and make sure they're perfect. So you're gonna check all your corners and your edges and make sure everything's just the way you want it. Because do it now, because once the paint hits it, you're committed. Up until the moment the paint hits it, everything can be changed. And you're just pushing it into that tape line, getting about halfway on there. And you're gonna put it on pretty thick too. Like it's a, a fair load of paint. You're only gonna do this once. This is a, a done in one. And enjoy doing this because as you do this, this finishes this section for the day because you want to let this dry all the way overnight. This isn't a thing where you just let this dry for a couple hours and bang on to the next coat. Let this go all night. There's no sense in rushing it. There. Strike two is done. I'm gonna do this like three more times. We'll talk about it more in the end. All right, so here's the thing to talk about as we go. You can see I've got a big seam here between these two sheets of floor. And this is the time to really load those edges because you can fill that with white paint. You won't because as the paint dries, it'll shrink quite a bit, but get as much wedged up into the edges as you can because when you paint the stripe that is going to be what keeps the color from weeping way under the tape because this is this is your primer paint and its whole purpose is to seal off that gap so right there that's how that's done all right guys so there you have it it's done this is section r and of like, I think it goes up to T. And we've gone through, so far we've done the entire layout and the masking. We've done the prime painting. The next step is gonna be first coat of color, which is the hard one. Second coat of color will just be easy. And then we get to peel it and you get to see the great, wonderful thing that you've made. So we'll be back. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. And as always, we'll see you next time.